So I love terrible, terrible movies. And not just the kind of ones where you go on Netflix and you fire up into the, the ones under the heading, things to watch after a hangover. I love the excellent kind of bad movies. So my, my, my question I'm posing tonight is, what makes a good, bad movie? Because there's lots of terrible ones out there, but there are certain factors that make good, bad movies. And these are self-awareness, um, and which comes with that, that comes rule A, one, what rule... Sorry. Rule 1A, a way to get down and dirty. Rule 2 is a premise. 3 is the future is extreme. 3B is the sports are especially extreme. And 4 is knowing when to stop. And so for the first up, we have self-awareness. And this is when you have a movie that takes itself seriously to an extent. And you can tell that the crew and the actors and everyone are really into it, but they're not in on the joke. And even the few who are are the ones who are there just earning money for child support. The movie is taken completely seriously, and a good example is 1995 Showgirls, a movie that doesn't so much chew scenery as it does grind it to a fine, snortable paste. In it, Elizabeth Berkeley is hoping for a breakout role in a movie that's basically just a really long CSI episode, albeit less believable. And a bad example, we have 2010's Burlesque in vol- starring Scutangular and Cher's Death Mask, in which no one's really taking it truly seriously. We can't even, no one even gets nude in a movie called Burlesque, they just sing about it. It's a failure. This brings us to 1A, the willingness to get down and dirty, because really good, bad movies are really gross. The kissing is wet, the sex scenes are terrible, and a great example is The Room, where in the first 20 minutes there are three long, awful sex scenes. Rule two, premise, and it comes with the shrug because no one's sure what's happening. The plots are long and weird, and they're all come with this sort of like, mm, mm, I'm not entirely sure, you gotta watch it. And a good example of this is The Room. At its base, it's a movie about a man who's betrayed by his best friend and his fiance, kind of. There's about 14 other subplots that all of it get used once and then never spoken of again. Another great example is 1985's Jim Cotta, a movie about an American gymnast who goes to play in some sort of low rent hunger games, and he goes to a place called Parmistan, and the American government wants to put a military base there, but I'm not really sure what's happening, and uh, the elevator pitch would read like a drunken text message. <laughs> Rule three, the future is extreme, but it's only ten years in the future. Everyone is giant lapels, and the world's a post-apocalyptic hellhole, probably set in L.A. <laughs> And a good example of that is 1996's uh, Firepower, which is set in the post-apocalyptic hellhole that is L.A. in 2007, in case you didn't forget about that, and stars another good bad movie trope as it stars WWE wrestlers, including, in this case, Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> Followed by that, we have The Apple. It is a musical made in 1980 that focuses on, I swear to God, the power of rock in 1994, where an evil record corporation takes over the world somehow, it's not really explained, and I only, I do love this movie partly because that would be my aunt in the gold and the silver lame. Also, sports are extreme, such as, or such as in this case, we have the terrible BMX riding that is in red, running people over in Death Race 2000, and in this case, arm wrestling in Over the Top. No one wanted to stop, and this is kind of a broad point, but really, really good bad movies know when to end either the joke, the movie, or the sequels. And it's kind of a sort of an odd thing, because like, at some point you have to give up the joke, you have to give it up. And a really good example, is, this is a weird example, is Jason X. It's the tenth movie in the Jason series, but it takes it to its final level. It's the year 3000, Jason's in space, he's a robot space zombie, he's on a ship with sexy teenage co-eds, they all get killed, where do you go from there? Bad example, everything from the sci-fi and asylum films. The first one is great, they make 17 more. You can only watch Eric Roberts get his face torn off so many times. Basically, you just keep hammering the, the horse into the ground until it's just a quibbling pile of giblets. Other rules that I need to cover on tonight, bad movies generally focus on weird extreme sports, overuse of silver lame, too many triangles in the costumes, Sylvester Stallone, pop stars, and, uh, and bad freeze frames on the endings. If you were interested and you're suddenly inspired to go legally download some uh, terrible movies, some examples are Death Race 2000, The Mango, or Titanic 2, which is not a sequel to Titanic. It's actually a second movie about a ship called the Titanic that eventually, spoiler alert, sinks. <laughs> 
sorry I ruined it for everyone. And finally, I'll just leave it at this. I'm really glad when films come out and they're beautiful pieces of art that live on through years and inspire many people, but really, I'm the happiest when they don't. Thank you very much.